What the hell, Tristan? This is not the darkest game ever made. No, but it's close. <laughs> no, that video is coming. I just, over the weekend, okay, I heard that Seven Days to Die had gotten these amazing updates with the game, right? I heard that the devs came back and they added so many great things, quality of life changes, improved mechanics, uh, graphics, stuff like that. Seven Days to Die is a game I have covered on this channel before. The last video I made about it is actually called Seven Days to Die, Nine Years Later. And in that video, at the very end, I highlighted some of the things that I think could improve Seven Days to Die and make it more fun for people like me who are enthusiasts for zombie survival games. I mean, I flock to that shit quicker than flies on dog shit. I, I love survival games and you throw zombies in the mix, it's, it's just as good. But it all depends on how you do it. You can't just place a bunch of zombies in one big area and put the player in the middle and expect them to know everything right off the bat. And that's where Seven Days to Die comes in, because for a long time, this game was unfinished. And apparently, only just recently came out into full release. All I know is that Somebody bought the rights to the game and, uh, cause they made enough money to do so and they improved it. Like a new studio came in and basically with more experience, more, uh, professional skills, you know, involved with creating video games. I, I'm not a video game creator, so I don't know. These employees who are considered professionals, who are considered fucking God tier at their jobs, right? They came in and bought the game and introduced a whole new, uh, game essentially. So they say. Now, this cursed Steam review is very long, and that's because I wanted to cover everything wrong with this fucking game. People are still convinced that this game is a solid 10 out of 10. I don't get how. I, I don't understand. But anyway, hopefully you guys forgive me for not releasing the darkest game video that is coming. I just, I wanted to get this out first because I'm so fucking appalled at Fun Pimps and Iron Galaxy, or whoever else is involved with updating the game today. You guys need to watch this to the end, please. I'm telling you, I have never gone harder on a review in my life. Anyway, enjoy. Seven days to die. Ugh, never thought I'd have to make a comeback to this horrible shit show. Don't get me wrong, I've had plenty of fun with the game, and at one point I was a mega fan. Hell, you could even say that the game was one of my all-time favorites at one point. I loved it that much. Previously on the channel, I've uploaded other 7 Days videos with my thoughts and opinions on the game since its deceptive and clunky release all the way back in 2013. Before, I never complained too much about the game itself due to a multitude of reasons, one major one being that it has mod support. Through Nexus mods, you can experiment and do all sorts of cool shit with the game, enhance the experience tenfold. Weaponry, clothing, vehicles, anything you can create in the game, I did. And for a long time, I couldn't step away from 7 Days, which is why it hurts me to place it on the official Curse Steam Review playlist. Look, if you like this game, I get why. It has some surprisingly good mechanics behind the ugly translucent curtain it drapes over the player's eyes. The actual survival aspect is done fairly well in 7 Days, often forcing you to make multiple trips across a very large map with plenty to explore. Houses, cities, hospitals, workshops, police offices, Anything that mankind has built with their bare hands is in this game. There's a skill system that allows you to boost up your character, fit with a few different branches of upgrades. Simply put, this is what Fallout's special attributes was. You gain a point each time you level up, and you'll have to slowly grind your way to becoming a stronger and overall more favorable character. In the beginning, you might as well break your own legs and then sign up for a marathon the next day because you're definitely ill-equipped to handle the dangers outside. But I'll cover that in due time. In order to give this a fair and honest rating, I want to discuss what I love about Seven Days to Die before I tear it to pieces. And like I said, my opinion doesn't even fucking matter, so if you get upset that I'm not the biggest fan of a game that clearly hasn't been out of early access for nearly a decade, I don't know what to tell you, man. That's right, even 10 years later, Seven Days to Die still suffers more than it prospers. But like I said, positive stuff first. The graphics in Seven Days to Die are... Well, the enemies in Seven Days to Die are pretty- Alright, okay, so the loot is pretty sweet at times, and you can find all sorts of goodies that you can hoard back to whatever place you choose to be your hideout. I said the same thing about Stalker Anomaly that I will say right now. 
The ability to go wherever you wish in the world and hunker down at any place of your choosing will always give me an automatic confidence boost. I fucking hate open world games that lie and state you can go anywhere when you really can't. I understand eventually you have to have a wall that the player can't get around, but in 7 days, that problem is non-existent. Any house, any building, any underground tunnel can be accessed if you have the proper tools and equipment. Shovels are great for dirt and sand, axes are perfect for wooden structures, pickaxes are for minerals and stones, and a few other kinds to try out. The buildings are all different. In each new town you locate, the buildings will have different signs and interiors, to an extent. Nevertheless, it's unique to be able to access various locations like this. Not even Grand Theft Auto has given you the ability to go inside of every building you see, though they've come close. The main theme of the game is well done with the seven day horde mechanic, where every seven days a blood moon will occur and a massive horde of zombies will begin hunting you down for a few minutes. Ideally, by the time you reach a blood moon, you would have the supplies and firearms necessary to keep your base and yourself out of harm's way. Defending your base with the right equipment feels fun. Engaging the zombies as they infinitely storm your position feels both satisfying and scary. At first, it's not like you encounter just one type of infected, as there are different classes between them which split them apart, ranging from faster, tougher zombies to fucking zombie dogs. The guns are effective when you actually manage to find a decent firearm, the game becomes much easier. Whether or not you're looking for easy is entirely your choice. I know I don't play these kinds of games on tougher difficulties because I'm not a sadist. The easiest difficulty, Scavenger, is pretty tough but enjoyable to say the least. Loot spawns at a normal rate and the zombies aren't that hard as long as you're facing them one on one. Vehicles are a craftable necessity if you wish to explore the world around you at a much faster and laid back rate. Upgrading your mechanic skills will allow you to discover blueprints more often, including vehicular ones. Combat divides itself into two separate categories, fight or flight. When fighting back against the infected, you'll have to consider every possible option. Look at your inventory, look at the situation, and calculate whether it's a good move or not to fight back. Coming from Anomaly, I can personally guarantee that there's nothing wrong with running away from a fight. Quests are a thing, since the Alpha 19 launch of the game. All you have to do is complete the starting tutorial, then you'll automatically be given directions to the nearest trader. Once you get there, you can ask to fulfill their needs in a few different ways for some XP, cash, and other useful rewards like guns and ammo, which, to be honest, does add a lot of incentive for me, but I'm gonna cover this later on. So now you're wondering, Tristan, it's been quite some time since you last played 7 Days. What has been updated since? Well, I'll try my best to point out the newest possible updates that I'm aware of. Certain locations now have names, along with a danger indicator beneath, letting you know what the challenge is ahead. If you see one skull beneath a location's name, you relatively should be okay. If you see any more than three, you might want to consider gearing up heavily before confronting your attackers. The gore system has been revamped with multiple different animations for decapitating zombies. You can now cut their heads in half, split them open at the crown, or break their jaws. It's super effective and feels like a feature that's been missing for far too long. When consuming certain items, you're no longer forced to carry the dumb fucking useless materials that automatically are placed in your inventory. For example, back in the day, if you drank purified water in 7 days, you'd automatically pick up the empty glass jar that once held that water. I hated this feature because the jars and tin cans provide no real sort of help to the player besides being viable materials to the forge, but this early on, you don't want to focus on that. Now that I can eat a can of food without having to worry about discarding the can itself afterwards, my headache has slightly reduced. The locations in this game all feel and look different, like I said earlier. It's unique in any open world game to see a distant tower or building and think, holy shit, I can actually go there without the worry of invisible walls. So yeah, that's about all I've seen from the game that actually looks different. I'm not caught up with the lore of the updates log with this one, so I could be missing a few things. Now, uh, before I go on, I need to clarify that if you're an enthusiast for survival games, chances are you probably love Seven Days to Die. Maybe it's the sole carrier of the great memories you had with friends, or maybe it just feels pretty damn good to play solo and level up a character who earned their title as the ultimate zombie slaying machine. The problem is that the game fucking sucks. Yeah, even after all the great times I've had and the insane laughter I've shared with friends, I gotta say, Seven Days to Die is one of the worst games I've ever played, while somehow also being a decent distraction when other games weren't doing it for me. Because it gets a lot of stuff right, it really does. 
but it also gets a lot of stuff wrong. Very, very wrong. It comes to me as a surprise that, according to Google, the Fun Pimps and Iron Galaxy, the developers of this game, earned an estimated 200 million from seven days to die as of today. What the actual fuck? I really couldn't believe the number was so high. I have a feeling lots of it is due to the game going on sale at different times since its release, or because it was so jank and clunky that people couldn't help but be tricked by the cover art into thinking they were getting something decent. With that kind of money, with that kind of financial gain for a video game that feels half finished after its full release announcement, you'd think that the game would at least look better. The graphics are dog water. Every texture and color is so off-putting, it feels like I'm walking through a vivid dream during an acid trip. The walls of interior houses are monotone and boring to look at, almost giving you sensory deprivation. The zombies don't look very good either. Sure, I guess they're animated fine, but you get the same exact variations over and over again with little to no mixture of tactics. They just slowly approach you and swing at you, sometimes climbing ladders to reach your position if you're higher up than they are. But $200 million is clearly not enough money to afford ladder animations, so I must be a fucking fool. Some of the textures remind me of cardboard Board, and even with the graphics raised to ultra, the pixels are visible everywhere. It literally looks and feels the exact same as when I first bought and played this all the way back in 2013. That's not a good thing. The first person animations are lazy. For now, you could call these nitpicks, but they still grind my gears. Why isn't there a sprinting animation? Your stupid hand is just stuck perpetually out in front of you at all times. Who even walks like that? When you equip different items, there's no animation for it, such as holstering or tucking it in your belt or something. That would have taken time and effort, which clearly the $200 million winners of this game didn't want to incorporate. No, instead your character just flings the fucking item or takes it out of his ass and holds it out in front of him. The view model doesn't even match my player model. I'm supposed to be a fat piece of garbage covered in toxic green slime, but my hands look normal. You're telling me it's too hard to program different colored arms? And how about some visual clothing? I feel like I'm running around naked and often forget I have clothes equipped until I look at my hideous character again. Alright, enough of the nonsense complaints. The real complaints I have with Seven Days lie deep inside of its gameplay, so sit back and enjoy. Or get angry, because this isn't going to be fun for either of us. The most important bullshit I want to call out first is the XP mechanic. Every time you kill a zombie, destroy a structure, eat something, drink something, breathe, fart, you name it, you'll gain XP. This is used for when you level up, which grants you one point to any attribute you wish. There's agility, fortitude, perception, intelligence, and strength branches. Gee, sounds familiar. In each of these branches, you'll find various options for your character's perks and what they offer. Most of them go all the way up to five points per perk. But guess fucking what? Every time you level up, no matter what level you are, you only earn one point. One fucking point. Look at that. Level 17, and I have two skill points to spend. Wow, so courteous of you. I've killed probably 10 hundred fucking zombies at this point, and it doesn't matter. You don't get any more perk points. See, you have to upgrade both. So, like, if I want to upgrade my strength, right? It's just like Fallout, but here it's worse. In Fallout, you have the option of choosing multiple perks and upgrading multiple stats. Here, you do, but you don't, because I only have two points available. So watch, beep, boop, oh, there goes my points. Now I'm a level four in, now I'm a level three in strength, but I can't do anything else now because I'm out of points. This is not fair. And it teaches you nothing. It, it gives me nothing to work with. I have no way of possibly upgrading my character to the way I want him to be because the, the perk points are fucking dog shit. Are you kidding me? What a dumb, tedious grind for no reason. I know you can alter the settings in the game menu to maximize your XP pull, but it still does nothing. You only get one point when you level up. So I guess you better have zero life besides video games and prepare yourself to grind just to be a somewhat stable character. And no, I'm not saying I want to have the strongest, beefiest Tarzan dude right off the bat. That's too easy. But at least give me like five points per level? I feel like that's a much more fair division given all the options presented to you with perks. 
So, the XP sucks, what else? Whenever you find keys that unlock the doors of the house you're currently searching, those locked doors will spring open magically as if Harry Potter just walked in. But you're not allowed to close them again, granting the zombies a window into your base if you were to choose one of these houses to hold out in. You are forced to sit there and destroy both doors in order to create a proper barricade, which is just fucking dumb. Seven Days to Die is so bad that they don't even let you close doors. Doors! Vehicular travel is ridiculous, the cars don't move very fast at all. Sometimes I often wonder if I'd have better luck pulling over and walking the rest of the fucking way. Holding down shift is supposed to give you a turbo boost, but it's so minuscule that you'll need a microscope to see the effect. And, get this, you can drive underwater. Why does this work? Why am I allowed to fully submerge this vehicle and still somehow drive it through to the other side? 200 million dollars and they couldn't even fix that. The sound design is awful. Every single audible aura of vomit is ripped straight from someone's freesound.org account, I swear. Even down to the zombie sound effects, I refuse to believe they were recorded specifically for this game. When you get punched by a zombie, or scratched I guess, it just sounds like they're slapping you. You feel like you're being pimp slapped by the fun pimps themselves because we're their bitch who gave them money and now they're laughing at us. Oh my god, the motorcycle is the funniest thing ever though. It wobbles more than a weebles wobble. It wobbles, but definitely definitely falls flat on its fucking face. It's not much faster than the car, but it is nice to use in terms of slipping past tighter spaces. Did I just lose five of my bike's health on a fucking mattress? Glad that it can handle driving 20 feet underwater, but can't handle a wooden fucking fence. And don't even bother running zombies over, they deal as much damage, if not more, to your vehicle. Look, I get that if you were to hit a zombie or something along the lines at such a high speed, it probably wouldn't be too good for your car. But you can't tell me that it would just completely devastate every function of it. If you drive at 20 miles per hour, you'll still receive a massive amount of damage if you hit a zombie. Who the fuck is responsible for this in-game decision? There you have it. Vehicles are garbage. Moving on. Let's see how lockpicking goes, because that is a mechanic. You hold E, and then you select pick lock. Now you just wait for the timer. But, every so often, your lockpick will break so you have to keep doing it. And it resets the timer to a certain degree. But I'm gonna show you why this is bullshit. Now I'm at the three second mark, right? It should take no longer than three seconds to finish picking this lock. Oh, it failed. Okay, try again. Oh, it failed. Okay, try again. Oh, it failed. Try again. Oh, it failed. Try again. I went through six fucking lockpicks. And do you know how rare they are to find in this fucking game? All that trouble. And for what? What did I get? I got a scope and I got eight shotgun shells. Neither of which I can use. Great. Thanks, Seven Days to Die. The loot system is broken, or it hasn't been touched since release, because I can never find a single useful item imperative to my survival. Sure, I found a bunch of medical supplies, ammunition, and parts, but I can't fucking do anything with them without a workbench. And in order to get a workbench, I have to craft it. But in order to craft it, I have to learn the recipe. But I can't learn the recipe until I unlock the perk that allows me to. But then I still can't build a workbench because I don't have the schematic in the first place. And what's the point of giving me all this ammo when I don't even have a gun? I've been searching every single army outpost I came across, and I keep finding cornmeal and bones. I don't need cornmeal and bones, I want a fucking rifle. I eventually did find a pipe machine gun, but it's useless this early on without the proper ammunition. You're not allowed to, like, melee zombies with guns, though that should have been here a century and a fucking half ago. The stamina is broken and confusing. Sometimes I can fight off an entire group of zombies and still have stamina to run away, and other times I can't even fight one without using all of it up. The game likes to throw you curveballs often and surprise you with their bullshit just to remind you how little they care for it. What do I mean? Well, look at this fat piece of shit. I stabbed him with a heavy attack in the face about 26 times and he managed to use up all of my stamina. He beat the shit out of me and all I could think was that my next hit would kill him, but he just wouldn't die. The birds? Yeah, there are infected vultures or hawks or something in this game. They're a pain in the ass, often hitting you right through solid surfaces or flying into your face before you get a second to react. Your aim has to be pixel perfect when engaging them. The dogs? Fuck the dogs. 
Oh no 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 Oh good I'm glad I'm glad that you can levitate you fucking dumb fucking dog Look at this. The zombie dogs in this game are embarrassingly overpowered, often being the scariest thing about the overall experience. They make a terrifying loud growl just before lunging at you, and they can kill you in mere seconds. There's no escaping them either. Your best bet is to face them and fight, otherwise you're just gonna get really angry really fast. Outrunning them is impossible, and climbing to a higher incline is a joke because they'll basically levitate to get to you. By the way, great fucking game design, huh? Does this look finished? Oh, man. Amazing game. Clearly finished. Clearly it's it's out of the beta phase. I mean, good God, look at what we have here. This is worth $60. This is worth $79.99. Pre-order, honestly. I, I mean, I can't imagine why someone wouldn't pay that amount of money for this experience. Look at this. Truly groundbreaking. What a waste of my fucking time. Who the fuck is giving Seven Days to Die a 10 out of 10 rating today? How can you play this stupid shit without ever once getting bored or frustrated? I wanna play that version that you're talking about, not this fucked up beta test. The lighting is inconsistent and looks straight hideous. Some of the surfaces bounce light off of them like plastic sheeting. You can't interact with light switches either, so there's no means of turning them off. In a good game like Anomaly, you can shoot any light you see and the room will instantly get dark, allowing you to sneak past a troublesome segment. This game requires the smallest fucking object to be completely destroyed if you want it gone. Things like doors, loot crates, and anything else. You have to endlessly swing at the goddamn thing you want to break and suffer from sensory deprivation. I'm not kidding. Sitting here and hitting one solid thing for over five minutes should not be in a game. I mean, come on, look at this McDonald's supersized shit. A metal door that can't be opened in any way. I have lockpicks for Christ's sake, but nope. You're forced to be Sam Lasko the caveman and break through fucking everything. Referring to the graphics again, I decided to change my settings mid-game to high. It does look a lot better than the low quality setting, but that's not saying shit. The frame rate drops on my PC to an unacceptable level, capping at around 40, sometimes less, so the game isn't even properly optimized. Changing the graphics doesn't change the gameplay. It's still the same repetitive grind over and over again. You don't even have the immersion here because when you look straight down, it's not like you have a 3D rendered body. Why not? Alien vs Predator did it and that game was made in 2010. What's this one's excuse? Was the 200 million not enough to program hands in a functional legs model? The buildings, as I stated earlier, are nothing but mazes, designed intentionally like this to waste your time and constantly frustrate you. Solving the awful platforming issues and navigating your way through a standard house without knowing where to look, because every single thing is hidden. I'm not saying I want all of the loot sprawled on the fucking floor, but at least have the initiative to acknowledge that every house is the fucking same pattern and fix it. Why is every house a fucking maze? I go in looking for milk and water, and they want me to go to the fucking basement and dig through 10 chunks of stone and rubble just to get to a fucking fridge. I'm disappointed because this was a game I held on to for a very long time. I was a die-hard 7 Days player for years before I decided to take a break, and the reason being, it's not well designed. There are no new major implementations besides a permadeath mechanic and some graphical changes. 7 Days to Die should be renamed to 7 Ways to Lie to Your Fanbase and Consumers. That whole thing. Because it flat out feels nothing like the cover makes it out to be. At this stage of its release, there should be miles worth of loot, exploration, and character abilities. The customization isn't any better, no matter who you play as. You'd never see your character unless you drive a vehicle. Overall, this just sucks. It sucks. Look, I'm not a harsh person by nature, but the reason I'm being so hard on the devs and the game itself is because it's inexcusable. Why the fuck is it this hard to add depth and variety to your game? It seems they only make time to update the smallest of changes, and I'm telling you right now, the experimental version of Seven Days is the same fucking thing as the base one, just slightly more quality of life nonsense. I guess I can recommend the game to those who are eager to play something silly, but taking the game seriously and putting in a lot of hours is truly sadistic considering it's an actual chore to play. I feel robbed and I haven't paid money for this game since 7 fucking years ago. I don't know what else to say guys, I'm disappointed that I expected the game to be different by now and it's not. 
It's the equivalent of going outside, covering yourself in gasoline, then sparking a cigarette. You'd have a better chance of building a dirt house in real life than enjoying the gameplay of seven days. I understand that there are mods for this game, which increase the playability by light years, but installing mods takes up a lot of space, considering the only logical option you have on PC for most modded games is Vortex, which takes up 500 megabytes of memory for the program alone. <laughs> what a joke. Anyways, guys, this was my very thorough and very rough around the edges cursed Steam review for Seven Days to Die. Like I said, if you enjoy it, that's great. I can't necessarily see why, but I used to. Back when the potential seemed to be heading somewhere, only to crash head on into the fucking wall. There's no hope for this game, and I don't plan on installing it again anytime soon, so go crazy if you want, go ahead and play it as much as you wish, but keep me out of it. I picked up trash for a year as a garbage man, and I'd honestly rather do that for the rest of my days than touch this game again. It's cursed. It's fucked. Just avoid it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Seven days. Until Blood Moon, and then we're all fucked, so...